the shop. Well, a very good morning to all our pool fans joining us from around the world. Welcome to Battle Creek, Michigan. It is the Michigan Open, a major tour stop in the Predator Pro Series here. What a high-powered event we've got in store for you all week long. Kicking it off with one mouth-watering prospect indeed. And I'm Jim White, and very happy to be joined by a very good friend of mine, and he's going to be joining the commentary team here this week, Eric Corlifson. Welcome, Eric. Hi, nice to be here. Good to be with you guys. Well, we were walking around trying to find out. We're in a hockey arena, and uh, the Kellogg Arena, to be precise, and we were walking around trying to find out what hockey team played out of here, and when we find that information out, we're going to get it to you. But here we go. It all starts here, and it all starts now. Roberto Gomez, Max Lechner, two great players to kick things off. Day one, our first match. Nice square break there. Can't hit him much better. Four ball coming around. No. I was checking out the Fargo rates before this match. Max is at a eight, coming in at 8.11. Roberto's coming in at 7.92. Puts Max at the 26th highest Fargo in the world. Two of the best players, two world-class players had drawn against each other here in the first round. Yeah, a little unlucky dude, when you think about that, Eric. But again, such is the quality of the field that have made their way here to Battle Creek. And again, just to remind everyone of the format, it's 10 ball, winner breaks. And in the first stage, 64 of the men. It's two sets, race to four each set. And if the set score is tied at 1-1, then we get the shootout. We've seen that shootout before. Stage two, once we're down to the last 16 and it turns into single elimination. Then three sets, race to four. If the set score in the third is tied at 3-3, we see a shootout to determine the winner. So that's when it gets pretty tense. A lot of excitement in store for us here all week long. So buckle up. This is going to be a fun ride. I mean, every rack is really intense. They're all short races. Every rack's important. It's a very exciting format for the fans. And again, not without mentioning 75000 for the prize money for the men. Yeah, 22000 to the winner, 13000 to second place. It's in a bit of a spot here. The cue ball's running into the 10. He's going to have to play some heavy draw if he were to avoid the 10. I think he's actually calling the 10, Jim. There's no other option. He, he realizes that if he pockets the 2, he's not going to have any positional value on the 3, so he's just going to go all in with the 10 here. It's a big shot early in the match. Kind of a, a two-way shot there. Probably more trying to miss the 10. Played more on the safe side. Didn't quite get covered, though. Roberto yeah. Can get through to this two-ball. Yeah, if, any, if anything, rail first is available for sure. Looks like he's not going that way. He's going to kick it into the other pocket. He's going to go be playing a kick safe here. Two rails trying to hit the top side of the ball. Got cover. Could be a bit of a tactical battle in this rack. Yeah, Roberto with an anxious look there, Eric, just to see if there was a 210 combination on, and it looks like it might be. I guess there is, yeah. Early chance, the first real chance falling to Max. Nice That's shot there. Start. Opens his account, secures the first rack. We will break in rack number two. A little unlucky for Roberto, just between those two balls to keep that combination on. 
Max is a bit of an unassuming player, but he's definitely had some strong results internationally. He's, he's a runner-up at the U.S. Open last year. Roberto was the runner-up at this event two years ago. Roberto's done well in a couple Predator Pro Series up to this point. Yeah, Moishas Yap, the two-time winner, as you uh, reminded me just before going on air. Defending champion here, and uh, the road to the title likely will have to go through him. But you've got Fedor Borst here, and for me, Fedor... He's one of the elite players on this planet. Yeah, you would say he's the on-paper favorite, and, and he's done well in these Predator Pro Series as well. So that's one of the breaks these players have been employing with referee racking, breaking from the side rail, trying to make the one in the side. Yeah, I got the eight into the opposite side, too. It just hasn't landed perfectly on this two ball, but we'd like to play a good aggressive safety here. Mm -hmm. There is a safe where you come over two rails and try to track the cue ball down towards the nine. Kind of tough to track the cue ball all the way across the table like that, but that is one option. Could be an aggressive two-way bank as well. And went for that cue ball behind the nine. Watch out for the corner. Looks like he's in. Mm -hmm. Little unlucky there. Tough when you're tracking the cue ball so far across, but he got very close to executing the shot that he wanted. Well, this chance, obviously, to Gomez now. Three balls tight here, so tight that it looked like he was eyeing up the bank on the second shot, not to pocket it straight in the side, a little too sharp to play it straight in. Got on the bank pretty well. Yeah, he's taking it. Oh, did you see the the three ball kiss off the uh, cue ball there? It actually didn't go straight in, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm seeing things. I think the, the three actually caught the cue ball off the bank. It is a pretty cloudy plexiglass. Hmm. Looking <laughs> Smooth cueing from Superman here. This looks like a three rail position into the angle. Got to put a good follow stroke on this. Nice long fall through, make the cue ball heavy enough to get through the angle. Playing at a thick ball here. There is a draw option as well. I feel like he's going to take the fall. Played that nicely. What do you think here, Jim? Twice across into the long pocket, or are we? Yeah, you don't want to start feathering balls, Eric. I, I think let the cue out and do exactly that. Twice across and back for the. You should get that cue ball pretty close to the seven. Yeah. Oh, watch out for the nine. He's okay. I'll tell you what, he couldn't have landed any worse. No kidding. Yeah, it's just uh, unfortunate where the cue ball actually ended up here. If he follows it, I feel like the cue ball is going past the side pocket, which will be okay, but you never want to roll a long shot like this. He was forced to, though. Got it. With the new cloth, you'll be able to play the inside rail like that. Kind of target the inside rail on those type of shots. Uh, right behind Roberto as he cued that long nine. I'll tell you what, steady as a rock. I agree. I was looking at that as well. No, no nerves yet. Well, he's come a long way from the Philippines. Yeah, he was actually at a tournament that I was at last weekend in Grand Rapids. It was a bar table nine ball tournament. There was a, there were a hundred players there. Roberto ended up finishing fourth. Rowan Garcia won the tournament. He's over here this week as well. Yeah, they, they kind of come in, in force, don't they, the Filipino contingent when they fly over. 
Hmm. A lot of them will stay together, and, and one of them will be the designated cook. I've heard. And, and uh, I'll tell you, many, many times, back in uh, in the era when you saw Efren and Bustamante, Bustamante was the cook. Oh, yeah? Yep, hmm. and uh, apparently pretty handy. So I never got a chance to sample any of it, but I talked to a lot of guys that did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Roberto's living in the States now, actually. He's, he's living near Texas. Rollins back and forth. I think he's the house pro at Bogey's Billiards. It's in Houston, isn't it? I was going to say I'm not quite sure what city it's in, but yeah, Houston sounds right. Yeah. Powerful break. Yeah, I feel that favors Gomez in these events. Like I, like I said, he has done well two or three times and just powering through the, uh, the, the ref rack. You know, he's, I feel like he's going to make balls more than some players that are trying just kind of like a small pop break. I'll tell you what, look at the way they've laid out for him, too. This guilt-edged opportunity for Gomez. Yeah, everything's there. A little bit of movement from the 7 to the 8, but he should be able to manage that. Get a movement from the four to the five as well. Kind of plays up naturally along the far side of the table. Got a little straight here. You can still stun this ball up the right side of the table. Looks like he's going to power and draw it back two rails, maybe three. Nice hit. You know, early days too, obviously, but. You know, big events like this, well, they're not put together without a lot of sponsorship involvement. You know, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Samsung TV Plus, certainly the Predator Group, Q Sports International, U.S. Pro Billiard Series Partners, Kamui, Medallia Light, Puerto Rican Open. Well, that's not too far away either, is it? Yeah, that, that one's anyway, scheduled for November, November. yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful part of the world for me. I was there last year. And I learned a lot about being on island time down there. Oh, yeah? You're okay Sh if you're a little late. Show up when you want type stuff? My kind, my kind of situation, believe me. Get down as he would have, would have liked. So it's a little tougher shot than Roberto wanted on this 10. You still expect him to get it, but this is missable. Yeah, just fell a little straight on the 8. Forced himself into a 1 rail position instead of typical 2 or 3 rails that you'd like to go in that spot. A confidence boosting shot on that 10, and he needed it after such a strong break. But I was going to say, Eric, you know, Max was on the practice table when we arrived just after 9 o'clock when the arena opened, and we never saw Gomez until just prior to the match. So yeah, kind of on. S sneak attack at the end. He was hitting balls for quite a while yesterday, but, uh, you know, getting on this match table, and there he was well short of speed, but he had a chance to hit some balls on this match table prior. He might not have fell quite so short on that 10, even though he got it. Big part of pool is making recoveries, though, and he did it. I always remember from doing commentary in the early days and with a, a lot of great snooker players, which I, I did a lot of the world snooker tour in, uh, in the early 90s. One of the favorite sayings of the late, great Willie Thorne, he says, you come to these events, you bring your game. You don't come here looking for it. Right, yeah. Practice it, or... Preparation, <clears throat> ready to be prepared to win type stuff. So a 2-1 lead. Our opening set, race to four. Gomez with the control. Went from more of the middle last time, choosing the side rail this time. Got the one. Combos barely available. Tough to see. Had a look to see if that three just squeaks by the nine. I'm not so sure. I'm right down the line on it. Let's have another look. Got a bit of a head shake going on there. I feel like 
probably doesn't. Three probably doesn't pass the nine. He is not quite sure of the safe options yet. Are we on a shot clock here, Jim? I believe we are. toughest of hits should be able to contact this three with a modicum of control off that right hand side and that's assuming he can't get straight through to it yeah i feel like he he, he can hit the two ball first just a question of if he can play the cue ball behind the three which would be, which would be the most obvious safe that was a little bit of a let off from gomez there he should have had him locked up there yeah, couldn't quite get behind the three, so use the seven and ten as blockers. John Lehman is uh, just pointing something out. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Oh, he feels like the cue ball nicked the five on the way through to the two. Max isn't admitting it. I don't know if we couldn't. Well, looks, Lehman yeah, foul. looks like Max, Max is shaking his head. I mean, it would be on to feather the five so thinly that you wouldn't even notice that it would move. And Max has always been known to be a good sportsman, so you would think that he would give up the foul if it was. But John's right there. That's why they pay him the big bucks. He's got the eagle eye. Certainly didn't see it from our perspective, but... You mark that one down in your, in your notebooks. Navigating through the 6-9 is going to be a little bit tricky here. Combo's not really lined up to the pocket. Probably going to be a situation where you play the 6 into the rail and then off the 9. Nice hit there. That was tougher than it looked. Stun follow with control. Just going to play up the left side of the table, likely, on this one. Avoid the traffic on the right side of the table. Yeah, it's starting to get a feel for the speed of the cloth, too. You said, Eric, just down the left-hand side, getting past that eight. Well, this is an interesting play. You could play the, the five off the nine and open up the pocket for the six. Not quite sure what happens with the cue ball to be able to get the cue ball in a position to pocket the six after that. It could be a power draw. Tricky to play off another ball with that much speed. Maybe as angle to go off the bottom. Yeah, he tried to, I think. Just missed the edge of it, though. But he's still in a good spot to play that six into the rail and then into the nine. Key shot in this rack right here. Oh, he cuts straight into it. Hmm. I mean, that's a tricky one to judge when you go rail first there, too. But I, I was seeing that one rail first from the beginning, and then he decided to cut straight into it. Had to really cut that ball off the rail and just didn't quite get it, get enough, hit it thinly enough. Looking good for Max here. Yeah, and you know what's important in this rack, too, is Max will be able to put that uh, that foul out of his mind. Yeah. Kind of an easier, easy opportunity to get back into a confident position here. Trailing the set 2-1 as well, so it's a big game. He's overhit the speed here. I'm not surprised the way that he played that, just drawing it off the one cushion, because he could have overcut the six and come back to the left-hand cushion. Would have left himself a little further, but he would have been better on the line. I agree. Might have been worried about hitting the eight for some reason, but I know what you mean. If he hit it thin enough, he could have come inside the eight. Ooh, came off a little short. Played at the speed, though, Eric, that he uh, 
he felt like he was going to be safe if he missed but that's that has to be considered a huge let off and i guarantee you roberto is happy to get back out of his chair he's he's calling the long bank here roberto plays a lot of one pocket he's used to these kind of shots i'd actually rate him somewhere in the definitely the top 10 one pocket players maybe closer to the top seven or eight Well, decided to go safe last minute. He actually called the side there just so, just in case he made it. And there you see the sportsmanship of Max Lechner just tapping the table to an acknowledgement of a good shot. And there, tapping the table because he's calling the side pocket off two cushions. Looking for a full contact on the seven. Yeah, the kick safe option here is going to be kicking the 7 towards the side and you possibly using the 8-10 as blockers, trying to hit the bottom side of the 7. Cue ball kind of comes over to the right side rail, possibly using the 8-10 as blockers. And you did hear the shot clock beeping down, so we know that's an employ mm -hmm. the center stage here in Battle Creek. Hit it at a good kick safe speed and got rewarded. Takes guts to kick a ball that, that slowly, you know. It's like you, you you better be hitting the right side of the ball when you're hitting it that slow. Otherwise, you're going to leave a shot for sure. Might have just barely left the right edge of the 7 here, but there's, I don't really see much that you can do with it, if you, even if uh, you can hit the right edge of it. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he was half playing the 10 there and also playing the safe. A lot of interesting shots so far in this match. Max has another aggressive long bank opportunity here, or he could cut the 7 to the right very thinly, bring the cue ball two rails, line it up with the 8-10. He's decided to go for it. It's tricky to know the strategy in these short races, right? I mean, I, I personally, I would lean towards being aggressive a little bit. I think... You have to go. You have to make shots to win the tournament. Beautifully hit. Well, Eric, can't wait for the chances. You know, you get a chance to put your shoulder to the door. You might as well do it. Yeah, I feel like in the longer races, maybe you could back off a little more, you know. But I think in, in this type of format, you got to lean towards trying to make things happen. long bank on the seven, proving pivotal in this rack. Because the first four have been split, nothing between them two apiece. Max has secured the break back. It's a winner breaks format. Even with the ref racking, I, I believe you still have to favor the breaker a little bit. I was asking you uh, earlier, I think when we came in yesterday, Eric, what your thoughts were on the, the lighting, the new Predator lighting, how it covers the table. I mean, in the main match arena here, we've got five of them that are lighting not just the playing surface, but all around. Yeah, I don't, I don't see many excuses coming from the lighting in this event. It, it's, it looks great to me, nice and bright, no shadows on the balls. No shadows under the rails. All the Predator equipment plays really well. Using Arcos 2 balls. I played with these balls a few times. I like them a lot. Oh, nice break from Max there. One sitting up pretty. As they sit, everything is attainable. It's just about controlling that cue ball. Yeah, first question here is if the two passes the four. I, I feel like it doesn't. I think he's considering drawing into it and trying to push it over to the right side pocket. 
There is a 2-4 combo option, but I, I'd stay away from that. Looks like he's going to try to draw into it. Two's nice, and, two's nice and close to it. That's a good shot there. Nice controlled draw. Looking good from here. I mean, he's got to get a small angle on the three and then open up the, the cue ball back to the four. Looks possible. I think the biggest issue is that the cue ball is running away from the three a little bit here. So he's going to have to make a longer shot on, on the three. Still all there if he stays in if he stays in stroke. Got a little too much angle here, but I feel like you can kind of float draw the cue ball over to the left side rail and play the four in the corner instead of the side. There is a two rail forward option as well. Yeah, went, went the safer route there. Move the cue ball less distance. Usually a good plan overall. Think the point's coming into play here, Jim? Or It's close, Aaron. Right down the line. It's not a scratch. And if he does hit the point, he, he'll actually be okay still. He's just going to have a bit more cut angle on the six than he would like. I did hit the point. He's got a little more angle on the six, but it's still manageable. If you like just playing this one in with a little bit of left, seven in the corner. Once you get on the seven, it's pretty much a done deal. Nice rack, though. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with, uh, with how both of them look at the table. Yeah, they both, both look settled and at ease. I mean, 9.30 in the morning, local time, this match started. Well, they knew they, they knew they had to come with their game. They, they both know each other, what, what the other player is capable of. He's good now. Softly float over to the right a little bit. So you're looking at 3-2 with Lechner breaking. Just broken around this rack, so... No reason to think he couldn't run another one to win the first set. Yeah, and both players seem to be breaking very well on this table. They found the speed. They found the golden spot. I think they've made a ball in the first four breaks. Yeah. Confident display there from Max. Three to his lead. Try and break to close out this first set. And looking around, looks like there's a lot of people in this arena this morning, Eric, that uh, obviously couldn't sleep. Yeah, there's also a CSI League event going on. I feel like if I was to take a quick estimate, I would say almost, I don't know, would you estimate 75 bar tables? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And as I said, this is a hockey arena. When it's not being used for a Predator Pro Series event, I'm going to find out. I know that we've got the, uh, the Colonels, the Battle Creek Colonels. This, this could be one of their... And when I say kernels, I mean like popcorn kernels, <laughs> K-E-R-N-E-L-S. So uh, I don't know who came up with that name, but Battle Creek obviously is uh, is the main city for Kellogg's. So if you're a cereal fan or uh, a bar fan, Battle Creek, Michigan is the center of the universe for Kellogg's. Kind of choosing different places to break from, almost like, you know, just seeing which one kind of works the best, which one they feel like they're going to employ throughout the tournament. Didn't get a shot here, though, so we're going to have some kind of exchange between the players in this in the set, in the sixth rack of the set here. I feel like you just have to push for distance here. I don't feel like there's any pushing into kicks or pushing into jumps. Six is blocking the one ball too much. Can't really push into a kick safe. For me, this has always been the biggest mystery to the game of pool, the push out. Well, yeah, it's the only shot where you have the option of doing anything. You can pocket another ball. You can 
not hit a rail, you can just push the cue ball and not hit another ball, hit another ball, so, you know, it's kind of like playing one pocket, but it's the only shot in, in nine ball, it's like playing one pocket, right? I mean, you know, general thing you want to look for is to leave distance. Uh, when, I, you, when you're up against an opponent, though, Eric, that jumps real well, right? you've got to always consider that, too. 100%. The situation yeah. right here, like, I, I don't see that playing the, the good aggressive safety and rolling the cue ball down in behind the four is that difficult. But maybe, just maybe, Roberto knows how well Max Lechner kicks, or sorry, jumps, and, and that mm -hmm. is the reason that he's turning it back over. Because that's really the only safety option that I see. I agree. Yeah, it'll be cue ball behind the four here. I think what Roberto didn't like about it is maybe the cue ball can end up going too far to the left, but it definitely is possible to... Well, I went the other way. See, that to me, I always think of that as like a back-off safe where the, the cue ball and the object ball have to get on a perfect line. Pros play that Pros play that shot all the time. You know, it's a standard safe, but... Uh, he's, and he, played it, he's actually played it perfectly. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, he did get it. Uh, Roberto can go two rails here and play kick safe, but... Yeah, it's good weight there, especially early in the tournament. Got out of it. Not to the point where Max can't play safe back, but staying alive for the moment. feel like trying to line the cue ball up with the 8-9 here. One could tend to go a little too far to the right, but try to hold. Oh, he's going to swing it around the rails. Uh, straight over. Left the shot here. Tough to tell if you can actually if he actually left the, an angle to pocket the ball, but you can definitely see part of the one. If you can't pocket it, he'll go off the right side of it, play the one to the left, cue ball, two rails, down table. If he can pocket it, I feel like you have to go for it here, being down three two. It's close. He's got to decide quick too. Does he have an extension? I don't I feel like he hasn't called one. He might have called one briefly. I uh, can hit it full and play the cue ball over. Is this a two-way, two-rail bank? See, that's the one-pocket knowledge there, right? Like, taking a sh You know, he ended up hitting it wide, but he's taking a shot at maybe banking in the one every once in a while and still giving himself a chance at the two. That's what these world-class players are so good at, right? You know, just... Playing a playing a, aggressive, creative shots, right? And you'll see a lot more of that in ten ball too. More balls on the table, more options. What a shot with draw as well. That could be to win the set. Great shot there. Yeah, he brought. It was almost like a three-quarter jump cue out there, a little longer than what you know, normally see from a jump cue, but what an effort from Max Lechner there. You saw Gomez shaking his head as he went back to his chair. He knows. He yeah. knows how well Max jumps. Right. Yeah, if you're trying to if you're trying to power draw or, or draw a long jump like that at all, you, you'd stay with the longer jump cue. That's that's a predator air rush that he has there. One of the best jump cues on the on the market, if if not the best in my opinion. Gonna come around two rails here. The cue ball's kinda tracking directly towards the three. He might try to go between the three and the rail and out. Looks like he did. He's gotta miss the four. Didn't quite get there. Banking angle looks a little long, but he might be able to tighten it up with a bit of left spin. It's going pretty long in the pocket. Might be too hard to tighten up. It's definitely safe options if he decides not to be aggressive. Yeah, just opted for the safe. Bank was lying too long. Well, once again, I think Roberto's happy to get out of his chair in this opening set. For sure. Yeah, he just he, he laid on an angle with the two there that he was always going to be coming kind of close to the three or close to the four, and he was just trying to weave it in between the three, four, and the rail. It was, didn't have any drawing options because the cue ball was on the rail. Well, he's trying to cut this in. 
Yeah, he, he decided it's time for offense, I think, here. Yeah, I just caught it too thin. Ended up looking like a kick, but he was trying to make it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to like his next shot. Yeah, just nestle the cue ball right up between the 8-9 here. Try to, get, try to get the cue ball as close to the 8-9, make the kick as tough as possible. Kind of has that like Fedor Gorse feel to him a little bit, Lechner, you know, like real strong power stance, a little longer on the backstroke, real nice timing, slow cue, slow cue movement overall. Tough hit, real tough hit. Yeah, I feel like you have to stun it a little bit, which makes the judgment trickier. Didn't get it. Yeah, he wasn't favored to hit that ball at all. Anytime you're kicking at a ball that's behind you where you have where you don't have exact relevance of where the ball is, you only only from when you looked back at it before, that's a very tough kick. Pretty much in line here. I mean, gotta get a bit of a small angle on the eight. Six lies well for that type for that position there. So Lechner, a favorite to win the first set here. He played well. He broke and ran at least one rack, if not two. Well, it was a risky shot that Gomez took on on that three to try and thin cut it down the bottom cushion. Ended up really being the pivotal shot. I think she got a little too much angle here. I don't know if he'll decide to cinch it. I think it's too easy of a pot to cinch it and yeah, I just played the cue ball over cue ball might be running into the nine but I feel like he can manage it maybe play the thick part of the pocket draw straight back yeah, straight enough strong first set here nice opening set to open off the week Don't feel like we saw a missed ball, really. Not an easy one, anyways. First set does go to Max Lechner, 4-2. Gomez, Gomez missed the combo on the 6-9 there. That was a bit of a pivotal game. They ended up playing a couple safes back and forth on the 7 that game because Lechner got out of position. I think Lechner ended up banking the seven in to win that game. Yeah, players just taking a, a short break right now. Good news is the washrooms aren't too far away.
fabulous shop. Back to Kellogg Arena here in Battle Creek, Michigan. We've got one set already in the bank. Max Lechner took that one home. 4-2 over Gomez. Breaks. We get things started here in the second set. Winner of the first set has the first break in the second set. And if you're just joining us, this is the Michigan Open. Main stop on the Predator Pro Series. Well, there's going to be some moving in this rack. Two actually plays into a carom on the five. Got to get the cue ball in a pretty specific position to actually play the carom. Cue ball's actually, he can pocket the one here and move the cue ball towards the two. Hard to tell if he can actually run it into the two. I feel like it's kind of more running into the eight. But definitely going to get it in that area. Tricky shot. Hmm. About the only place you could have hit the three from and not made it. Karam might barely still be there. First question is, can he see the one? You definitely see it, Eric, but I don't know whether he can see enough to make it. It's close, but if you said to Karam from the two to the five, maybe... Roberto Gomez's insurance policy. Time will tell. Yeah, it looks like it's lying a little thick. Looks like he has to kind of come over where, he, where he's pointing to right now. He'd prefer to move the cue ball less, kind of like closer to the six, but it looks like he has to move it past the side pocket to be able to hit the two thinly enough. He's going to take a shot at it, though. Look out. That's unlucky, right? Really? Had to get the cue ball right in that area. Tough to legislate for that. Even with ball in hand, the only option is still carom, so just going to be a question of how can he control the two and continue the run out from there. I think you just play the two off the side rail and shoot the two in the opposite side pocket you know, where the nine is. Ooh, caught a double kiss on the two. Changed the angle that the two is coming off the rail at. Still makeable in this bottom right corner. Actually, in the bottom left corner as well. Left corner is the play here. Looking right down the line. Good shot. So I think these players have played in this format enough where they're they're not too worried about this, but it's kind of an odd spot to be in where you know that even if you win the set, you're still going to a shootout, right? It's like you have to accomplish two things now, kind of, you know? Um, but I think they've played in this format enough that, you know, you just go out and you play each set and, I, th you know, there's some, there's even something in Lechner's mind, like, I don't want to go to the shootout, right? But it, it definitely plays into the overall mental psyche of the match. Sure it does. And, you know, what's funny is as the tournament progresses, and I remember from past events I've done, is you see a lot of players practicing that spot shot. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but you will see it this week, trust me. Mm-hmm. And the thing about this week as well is that there hasn't been a Predator Pro Series since, uh, I believe, March. This is the first one of the 23-24 season. So players haven't shot that, been in that shootout situation for a few months. Uh, 
I mean, Gomez looks strong. There's no reason to think he can't come back and win this set. Got a little straight here, but he'll be able to cheat certain parts of the pocket and do what he wants with the cue ball. Everything dead center. A good start. The second set here for Superman. One nothing. Dry breaks have been at a premium. We've seen, I think, one or two so far. Seven racks complete. But the breaker has definitely had the advantage. Yeah, I think, you know, I think they realized that power is going to be their friend here. And I think when you saw, you know, it's it's an interesting breaking format because everyone's not breaking the same the same way. You know, if, you, if you watch the World Nine Ball Tour, it's... They're kind of breaking from the box. They're hitting it the same way. They're hitting at the same speed. They're trying to make the one. But this one is its kind of up to the player to decide which break is working best for them. And kind of back to the old school power breaking, I feel like, is an advantage in this tournament as well. Gomez has always been a power breaker. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you were commenting when he got second in the World Championships. It's got to be about 15 years ago, and he was just smashing the smashing the nine ball break in the World Nine Ball Final. They're making balls, no doubt. Well, this is close. Yeah. Looking right down the line. Can see him eyeing it up. Didn't really see him shake his head or anything, so you got to believe that he can make it. If he, if he can, Eric, sorry. Go ahead. If, yeah. if he can, and, and he can just draw this out past the eight, this two looks like it might go by the nine into the corner five. Yeah, it's tight by the nine, but that would be the most obvious position for sure. Did he clear the eight? Yeah. He's going to have to think of a safe option pretty quick here. Could be cue ball behind the 10. Anytime you can play the object ball safe, like if he hits the two thinly and just cuts it over to the right side rail, takes a shot at getting the cue ball behind the 10, that's a good play because even if you don't hit it a little hard, I would have actually gone right at the 10 there, like try to freeze the cue ball on the 10, hit it a little thinner. I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe that way was a little safer overall, but... Still a good shot because even if he, at this level, I mean, you, you want to make sure you're making your opponent jump or kick, but if he happened to not get it, play it that way, he still wasn't going to lose the game directly from that shot. Yeah, no option but to hit the left side of the two. Played it well, though. Created distance. Got some fortune. This is a kick safe where you try to stick the cue ball near where the two is. Ideally, maybe even try to draw the cue ball back over to the right side rail and get use the nine as a blocker. Didn't hit it that badly, but the seven got in the way of where the two was tracking. It's a good reply, very good reply from Lechner on the previous shot. Spot him this opportunity. It's on natural position here. Don't see too many problems with this run out. Always easier said than done, though, of course. Don't miss too many from the commentary box. <laughs> Missed a few. <laughs> but yeah, we tend to uh, put these guys on such a high stage you know they are human at the end of the day and they do have nerves 
one's a little in between. I feel like he'll take the more aggressive approach and play the cue ball across. He could roll it in slowly, but I did roll it in slowly. In between shot. It's always a good thing to move the cue ball less as well. So yeah, we played the second rail there. I mean, that's that's a good lesson for amateur players. Like, avoid floating the ball. Always try to hit a rail near where you're ending up the where you're leaving the cue ball. Even on that play, it would never be straight back. Like, use the rail. Probably a straight back draw here. Bit of left spin. Keep the cue ball on the right side of the table. Hits the ball sweet. I mean, even routine shots like that, they're getting the cue ball exactly where they want, right? Sound fundamentals. You mentioned Feather Gorse. And, and... He is certainly in that category in terms of how solid he looks over the ball. Definitely. A lot of the European players are built that way now. They've always technically been very sound. I, I think a lot of American players have kind of taken up the, the mantle and watched a lot of the Europeans. They've got the, always had the European tour, which has created, you know, a breeding ground for top European players. And, I mean, we hearken back to the Moscone Cup. And for the early, I'm going to say 10, 12 years, it was owned by the Americans. Well, most recent, most recent times, Europe has come back. And the Americans are the ones that have had to change their game, change their focus. Yeah, and if you look at the world, the world rankings, the, the Europeans are right near the top. I think, I think it's a bit of... Um... You know, snooker fundamentals coming into the coaching over there too, right? Oh, obviously with a pool spin to it. But I feel that from a lot of the European players. Finally a dry break. It's the one past the eight here. Even if it does, it's a very tough shot. It's looking down the line. Looks like he might have a go at it. Problem with the one past the eight is you can't really power the cue ball forward. You kind of have to slow roll it in. And it's always considering it. This is a very tough shot if you have to roll at it, though. Oh, he's powering up here. This is tough, too. Very tough, elevating the cue with the, so much distance between the cue ball and the object ball. Had to do it, though. It was either roll it in or play it like that. No aggressive options here for Lechner. Yeah, I feel like using the 7-6-2 area as a blocker. Playing the 1 into the middle of the long short rail. Cue ball to the left. That's one option. Could go this way, but I feel like the three is going to kind of run into the track that the cue ball is going to be on if you start going that way. Stun it a little bit to avoid the three, but then the one kind of gets out of control. See what happens here. That's a good shot. Couldn't quite control the one while he was stunning it like that. Still good from there, though. Tough spot. I feel like you can thin the one here to the right a little bit and try to use the 8-9 as blockers. It's getting a little more... Oh, you can hit it thicker, thick enough to... It's easier to control the cue ball hitting the one thicker here. Similar shot to what I was saying, just on the thicker side of the hit.
Nice shot. So I find that funny. He actually called the side pocket on that. But that's a situation where if you did make it in the side pocket, you'd be in trouble. So why would you call it? So the thing is, in case it goes in, and in case somehow he got a shot on the two, then he would still want to be at the table. So you should always call something. Or even in the situation where the cue ball ended up where it did right now, Max would have just put him back in anyways. So there's no disadvantage to calling it, right? It's To me, it's, it's kind of, you know, you're calling a lot of shots that will happen 1% of the time. It's still nice, you know, when, when you're sitting there in your chair and your opponent flukes a ball in and you can come up and come back to the table. That, that, that's the spirit of the rule, too. But I feel like it involves calling a lot of shots that just will never really happen, right? Chance here for Gomez. Everything open. He has to take the lead in the set. Ending up on the rail a little bit here, but the pocketing is easy enough that he should be able to manage. Not quite sure about this one. Kind of feeling two rails forward. Might be tough to get enough left spin on the cue ball if you play that shot. I think I'd be favoring playing the six in the side here, but there is an option to play in the left corner as well. He's just going to draw it out one rail. And I did go with that two rails forward with left. Got a little too much angle here to hold for the corner. Still possible. But I feel like he might play back up for the side. Yeah, he's able to kill it enough. He's in good line now. Nice opening match here. Be nice to see a shootout on the first match of the day. Don't know if you want to ask them that. I know, yeah, well... <laughs> Mind you, Gomez would love to see right. the shootout. De depends who's answering. Yeah. It's too early to get those nerve ends tingling. That sure doesn't look too bothered. Just waiting for his chance back at the table. Actually came up short here. Still make him a favor to make the ball, but just kind of got a little straight, didn't under hit the speed. I actually thought he was going to play the nine in the same pocket as the eight. Yeah, and cue ball's got to travel a bit too. Mm hmm. Good recovery. Back around into the angle. And a 2-1 lead for Roberto Gomez. Breaking rack number four. Trying to force that shootout. Table plays seems to be playing pretty natural speed. I'd say, if anything, maybe just a hair on the slow side. Been a couple under hits, but... Well, a new cloth always slides. New cloth, new balls. Players know that. Yep. Typical that the rails will play a little slower and the bed will play a little bit faster. Seems like that's how the table's playing. Our drive down to the Kellogg Arena this morning, Eric, went through some areas here in Battle Creek. I don't know if you've ever made your way to this area of the state, but it's so green, so many trees. Very pretty area of Michigan. A lot of history, too. I was walking around downtown for a bit. This looks like the Underground Railroad went through this town. There was a, there was a monument to it. Man, smash that break. 
But here's the uncertainty of Ref Rex, right? You know, first eight breaks we saw them pocketing balls, I think, seven times. And I think for sure two of the last three, if not the last three, they haven't made a ball. I feel like he can make the one here. Best option with the cue ball is to track it between the six and eight twice. That's what he's looking at right now. Oh, he's thinking about bringing it over there. I feel like the seven's a little bit in the way of that track. Whenever he plays, there's a lot of traffic going up table, and, you know, ideally you never want to bump into a ball. You don't know what the exact result of the cue ball is going to be if you hit something else. I think personally I'd favor going between the 6-8 here. See what he does. He went that way. I would have been worried about hitting the 7 there. Obviously he didn't. Well, life hasn't gotten any easier. Yeah. It was a pretty long float if you were playing that track. Showing you right where he'd like to get the cue ball. He's already given himself the two, and he might be the only one that's given himself this shot. Yeah, well, these are the shots you've got to be confident on. I mean, if there's any doubt in your mind on a shot like this, you're just not a favorite. But this is what these players are so good at. Shot clock winding down, too. Still made it. Nice shot. You know what I was looking for there, Eric? Is whether or not his head moved. Mm -hmm. And he, he stayed perfectly still on the shot. Sure. Just delivered the cue straight on the intended line. And, again, we we say all the time how sound fundamentals, you know, breed success. That's what you practice for. It all has to become muscle memory. Especially on those shots where all it is is pocketing the ball. I mean, he knows that he's just following the ball, right? And the, and the only goal there is to pocket the ball. Same with this one, really. It's just natural position. It's all pocketing. And again, dead still. just as you mentioned, stayed down through it, dead still. It's good stuff. You know, you mentioned, uh, I think it might have been in the first track right after he capped it off, is how underrated... Lechner is, and you're getting a real good example of that right now. He's That's made fine. a couple shots under extreme duress, and just fundamentals have seen him through. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's to leave himself an angle on the six, get that cue ball back up for the seven. It's good. Kind of weave it between the eight and nine here. Should be okay. Play the cue ball f forward to the right of the eight, I'm thinking. Only danger is maybe getting behind the nine, but I think it's unlikely. It's a good shot. I actually have to play a stun follow there, which is a tricky contact point. I like coming up for the side here, personally. Always favor the closer pockets. So this is to tie it up to all again. Another close, another close battle in this set. This is the point, really, in the opening set that Max took control. Yeah, I feel like he broke and ran the fifth rack on the last set. And this was a tricky layout. There was nothing easy about this. A couple of very good long-distance shots from Max Lechner. That laid the foundation for the victory, and... This is the fourth rack. It's 2-2. Two, two. Oh, Roberto's up out of his chair grabbing the balls. I mean, shows that he's not ready to quit yet. See if one of the players starts breaking closer to the middle. They favored closer to the side rail so far, but just because of the fact they haven't made a ball in the last couple breaks, they might go back to the middle here. 
this year's inception of the Michigan Open, presented by Samsung TV Plus. And uh, our producer was telling us a little bit about Samsung TV Plus. And did you follow what he was saying? Did you understand the app? Mm, sounds interesting. I think it's just an um, an add-on to any Samsung TV that you that you can buy now, like an extra streaming service. Technology is. Yeah, no doubt technology's come a long way, that's for sure. Yeah, I did go to the middle. And he made, look at this, the 10 hung up. Is anything going to lie near it? The 4? Just get on the 3, he's good. Yeah, this is an ominous sign for Roberto Gomez. He's in his chair, and uh, just looking at him right now. He just made himself a little more comfortable. Yeah. Because if he gets out of it, it may be just to grab the balls out of the pocket to rack them up again. Yeah, this is picture perfect for Max here. Straight's good. Just draw back somewhere around the area where that cue ball is right now to leave that 4-10. Yeah, cue ball's drawing just slightly to the right here, but it won't matter. The 10's right over the pocket. Just get the cue ball near the side. It's fine. Well, found the right break on that one, no doubt. Yeah, and if he can find a carbon copy, he'll have secured the open match, and a good win it would be for Max Lechner. He's 3-2 in front. We're breaking for the match. Yeah, the interesting thing about that one is that a ball went straight back in the side, like straight back, like, like they do with the template, so I think... Max will have noticed that, and I'd, I'd be surprised if he doesn't try the exact same break this time. If players start noticing those balls, like the five and the nine going straight back in the side, they will st they will stay to the middle. They're going to the side rail because they're unsure if those balls are going to go in as much as they do with the template. But again, because he saw it last rack, I'd definitely be thinking he would do the same here. Well, referee John Lehman just handing the cue ball to Max Lechner. Yeah, so watch for the 5-9 here. Chance to make the 5-9 straight back in the side. Same spot on the table. Didn't hit it a square this time. Didn't make a ball. Amazing how fickle the break can be. And he's left the one for Gomez. Pretty he, straight. Yeah. I think you got to just kind of play the cue ball around the area where the one's at right now and take the thin cut on the two. Or can he fall forward? That, that'd be ideal. If he can fall forward to the right of the side pocket, that'd be ideal. Looks like he's too straight. It's going to have to take the long cut on the two. See, he just used the, th the thickness of the one there to slow the cue ball down. He didn't even draw that ball at all. It's just when you're rolling into a thick ball like that, the object ball will take all the energy out of the cue ball. Ooh. Anytime you're spinning a ball at distance, there's that risk. You don't know exactly how much the cloth is going to deflect. You know, it's not like he missed that ball because he misjudged it or where to cut the ball. He missed it because of the spin. The new cloth just deflects a little bit more. One of the first shots he had to spin just didn't quite know how much the deflection was going to be. It's really one of the first makeable balls we've seen missed in how many games have we played? Over 10? Good reply from Lechner there. If Roberto's looking at this one cushion escape, he's got about a half a ball top side of that too. That's it. So mm -hmm. to say this is fraught with danger is an understatement. The match hangs in the balance. Well, he's close. 
to the seven and the four here. He's give, he's going for the short cue. Yeah. And it'll, and he's going to take the, the long piece off the, the jump cue here because he wants to get the cue ball up really quickly. It's just not, this is not a power jump. It's just an elevation jump. Now, degree of difficulty on a scale of 1 to 10, Eric? I mean, I, I feel he's a favorite to get over the ball, to combo the 6 in. It's about a 9.5, 9. Eh, maybe. Yeah, very tough. Well, I think you'd be pretty happy with that result. Yeah, he's still, you know, he's still alive here for sure. So just looking at the extreme right edge of the two, which actually could lead into a cut. Even if it does, he might favor the kick, but the kick is kind of going into the 10. Hey, it did go ball first there. Just kind of tried to play safe, but he's left it. Everything's makeable here. Position from the two to the three is going to be the toughest shot in the rack. He's shaking his head. I'm, I think that was a huge misjudgment. I think he was trying to go rail first with that amount of spin. Yeah. And he, he caught the two pretty thick. That's a good shot there, weaving the cue ball between three balls. He's in line now. Five to the six. Got to move the cue ball a little bit, but I feel like there's a draw, three rail draw option there. Kind of got on the wrong side of the four to play that three rail option, but he might I still feel like that's the best one, so he might try to just play the cue ball over, power it a little bit. Yeah, three rails back, seven on the side into the angle. Looking at our first hill hill set of the of the week here. Unless the cue ball comes behind the ten, no, not enough speed. Good shot. Right in line now. See how he plays the 9 to the 10. I feel like it's going to be across the table twice, back into the angle. There's two options. You could try to get straight on the 9, draw straight back up the rail, or take the cue ball diagonally across twice. The angle he has here might favor getting straighter on it a little more, but that's something that he would have he would have wanted to think about all the way right from when he was on the 7. Yeah, he went still, even though he got straight and it was leading into the cue ball being straight on the nine, he still chose this two rail diagonal track. And under hit it a little bit, but he's straight in. Roberto Gomez, he will break the four set shootout. That's where the excitement escalates. You'll probably see a few more people making their way to center stage here if it gets that far. He's got to win this rack to get there. 3 3 in our second set. Could see a little bit of half nerves on Roberto's face as the 10 went in there. Might have been something to do with the 10 enter the side of the pocket when he expected it to enter the middle of the pocket, but he's still feeling it. Short race. He knows he's one game away from forcing a shootout here. And, you know, in these short race tournaments, you, you want to get out of the first round. No doubt about that. The overall format of the tournament is going to redraw into 16 players. The men are starting with 64. The women are starting with 48. Um, so he doesn't have to come all the way back for the loser side if he does, or the loser of this match he wouldn't have to come all the way back for the loser side, but it would definitely be off on the wrong foot for either player. The biggest break that Roberto Gomez is going to hit to this stage in this event right here. He needs a good one.
Not looking good. Well, the two is very close to passing the 10, but if I were to say if it, if it does or not, I would say no. The combo is very tough. I feel like the cue ball is missing the 6-8, but then it's going to run into the 9. Tough to call this one. I mean, I think he's going to favor offense. And from there, would you favor getting really offensive and trying to combo the two into the ten, or is he looking to try and slice this one into the corner? He, well, I was thinking left corner at first, but it almost might look like he's going right corner. And I just backed off. The position, the positional value just wasn't high enough. Well, that is the definition of safety right there yeah this this is an extremely tough kick so tough that he might even just have to tie up another ball what do you tie up though when the nine's kind of blocking the rest of the balls is he gonna i mean he can see the two but the two's already in a kind of tied up position he's got to think here and he's got to think quick because he only has run a shot clock he has his extension And he's going to try to move the two. I don't think he expected that. <laughs> he's laughing. He's yeah. telling Max what he intended. Yeah. No, yeah. It didn't even look like the two passed. Obviously, it did. It went in the pocket. But I don't think he was thinking that either. Yeah, weird spot there. So the five is going to be the toughest ball now. The four lies good for getting on the five in the side, but the five's going very sharp in the side. Playing on about four and a quarter, maybe four and a three eighths inch pockets. Kind of shot you want to avoid in the side with the five. I mean, the other option would be to come up above the five and play the five ten combo. Eric, this is going to be a telling shot where he lands on this four. Mm -hmm. It's going to tell us how he's going to attack the five. Yeah, it looks like he's going for the combo option. Yeah, he's left himself short. I think he'd like to have been below the four, been able to roll into that five, maybe play the five into the corner of the side. But now you're right. He has no option but the combo, 5-10. Let's see if he can get right behind it. Got the cue ball decent here. I mean, at least he's close to it. He would have rather been on a bit more of a straight line, but the cue ball is close enough to the five that I would make him a slight favor here. Definitely well, not a gimme, though. Now it's to close the match out. And he's probably going to hit it at a speed where if he doesn't make it, the 10 hangs in the pocket, or is he going to get aggressive and try to play it two ways a little more and almost like cue ball behind the six? I think he, for me personally, you just got to go all in here. Don't want to cloud your your mind your mind with how, what exactly the cue ball is doing. Just play the combo. It's Got there, it. Max Lechner, four three in the second set, the handshake, and he survives the scare from Roberto Gomez. But Max Lechner staying in the unbeaten side. There'll be a lot more action coming your way from Battle Creek in the Michigan Open, folks. We hope you come back and join us. For Eric Olson, I'm Jim White. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again shortly.